so pumpy. Bonjour. So we're going with the guard. Yeah, because all uh, you join the countryside, there's a lot of uh, how to tell they they block the, the, the oh the yeah. Street. If they see you, they would like a bribe. Yeah. 9:30, time for anti-malarics. It's crucial to take them every single day at the same time. <sighs> how are the anti-malarics? Man, so good. Delicious. Hi from Burundi. We're finally visiting the Burundian countryside, a thing I've been craving since we came to this small African country. We're going to a place called Kiganda. It's probably one of the most interesting places in terms of history that we can visit in Burundi. After this, in the evening, we were invited for a dory. I'm, am I pronouncing it right? Dory, yeah. Dory. It's gonna be like a traditional party. Yeah. And we've been told that we cannot be dressed as a as homeless travelers. That's why we need to stop in a village to buy some normal looking clothes. That's gonna be a challenge for That's sure. That's gonna be a challenge. Finding a finding these things in a marché du village <laughs> in a in a village market somewhere on the way. in Burundi work in the agriculture sector and we can see these fields full of cassava, coffee, bananas, tea and all other plants all around us since we left the city. That's the reason why Burundi has the lowest GDP per capita in the world. For this reason many people refer to it as the world's poorest country but that doesn't necessarily mean that the conditions are that bad. It's only because the industry and the service sector is not that developed here and they don't contribute that much to the GDP. They can cultivate their own fields and raise their own animals. Yes, that's true. So they're having food apart from other countries like Somalia or South Sudan where hunger is present. GDP per capita should not be considered as the main indicator of poverty. There are better indicators. Small economy lesson for you. Three hours after leaving the biggest city Bujumbura, we found ourselves in a tiny commune named Kiganda. Kiganda was once a kingdom and home to the strangest tribe to ever live in the African continent. Wait, just a minute. Oh, look! Such a nice greeting. So in the 19th century, the tribes living here had the strangest tradition ever. When the king's reign was over, they brought the prince down to the village. He planted a tree down there as a symbol of his new reign, like the new king has arrived. And there was this very strange tradition. The villagers down there were not giving water to cows for several days. They were really, really thirsty, almost dead. They picked a very handsome man that lived near the river. They made him drunk, they tied him, they put him between the cows and the river and the cows stamped him to death. Once the blood of this young handsome man was mixing with the river water, the villagers started to applaud. <laughs> a very, very strange tradition. I would never want to be a handsome man in that village. They just don't choose randomly again. Oh, they have, didn't choose him randomly. No, you no. have to be a he belongs to a family, family yeah. called Abahi. So if I was a handsome man from that family, you, yeah. I would probably know that I'm gonna be stamped to yeah. death. 
which is not very, which is not a bad thing for you because you. Are, it was an honor yeah, for him. Yeah. But you would never be a handsome man. That is true. <laughs> it's just not worth it to be a beautiful person. Yeah, here. Only two hundred. Oh, you you would be so, so lucky. So this is made out of wood. Yeah, they cut trees and they just make. Wow. Look at him, how he. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like this? Yeah. Oh, but of. everyone would see this, yeah. right? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so now I look like a Burundian guy <laughs> 200 years ago. I mean, Wow, that's so light. Chaikirizo. Chaikirizo. And what were they doing with this? Uh, they used to let the mixed seat mm -hmm. for days. For days? To have a sour milk? I don't know. Yeah, we have something like that, sour milk. Like so it's basically rotten. It's mm. our national drink in Slovakia. Oh. They used to let the milk stay for one week. One week? Yeah. Burundi and Slovakia have so much in common. This was the bowl of the king, okay? The bowl of the king? Yeah. You're not allowed to touch it, Buddha. So this is where the king used to eat fufu. Fufu? The son of the king used to drink water in it. Milk in it. Milk in it. Yeah. Heavy milk drinkers. Yeah. Strong bones. Mm. Some, some weird information coming up. You're gonna love the story, guys. You're gonna love the story. <laughs> this is the jewelry. So the, yeah. the queen used to wear when they are going to the room. I mean oh. the bedroom. Okay. And she used to wear her the the jewelry in the belly. Okay. So you can hear that when you are moving, it makes a lot of ah. of noise. Okay. And there was a man called Muhimbiri who used to say. To, to stay under the bed. <laughs> under the bed. bed. Yeah, and anytime the jewelry makes noise, he okay. used to clap. Clap? <laughs> like, yeah, in order uh, to, work, to congratulate the So congratulate, he, like, yeah. congratulate yeah. you having yeah, sex. Yeah, every time he hears the wow. noise, he has to clap. This is probably the weirdest, uh, weirdest tribe or nation ever. Very but I love it. <laughs> Oh. You know the man who was supposed to clap if he he if he didn't clap, clap or did something else. Yeah, they used to cut his. Um, yes, his because he was doing something else. Of yeah. course. You you have to clap. So that is this is the thing the king used to drink alcohol. So this was the royal glass. Yeah. Oh yeah, royal glass. <laughs> and what is this? What is this? Yeah, they use no, uh, 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 again sex. No, girls use that when they are dancing. The <laughs> so we're gonna dance. see it in the dory. Yeah. Oh great! For the one that was tamed by cows. Mm. This is actually like a palace. Yeah, kind of. A kind palace. of a palace. This is where the king lived. Yeah. And there are only three huts. Just a small representation okay so before there were more huts there were so many huts you so could many huts so so many huts okay so let me tell you guys another bizarre piece of information this is a house of a drum a drum lived there no people were living there just this drum and this drum was very special because only the king could play it and it required a house so this is a house of a drum. Get your filthy hands off me, motherfucker. This is probably <laughs> the most bizarre thing. So the drum called Kanye that used to have a wife. So the drum was married. Yeah. To a human being. Yeah, a very beautiful one. And the wife used to put some cream on the drum to make him handsome, I don't know, that kind of thing. Oh, I would rather be a drum than a villager at that time. Yeah, bitches and cream, that's my life. So yeah. this is the palace. Yeah. <laughs> he found a shoe. He found a shoe. No, my God, my. Did the shoe have a wife? No. Welcome in the palace. Welcome to the royal palace. So the king liked chocolate uh, yeah. biscuits. Yeah. So that is the called ukruhimi. That's mm -hmm. where they used to put all the things we saw there oh, yeah. to oh, drink, uh, oh, what, to eat, to drink mm -hmm. milk, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. This is the bedroom. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, and this is where the guy was clapping, right? Yeah. Ludo's gonna clap, and uh, <laughs> we may. Uh, we can, yeah, we can. So this is where the magic happened. Wow. I can imagine this could have been very enjoyable. How did it work? Like, was the was the person always down there? Yeah. 
What? She used to stay there for the fucking whole life. For the whole life. For his yeah. entire the only, life. So the only time he had, he had the chance to, to just to go out. Yeah. It was when the king is not around. They used to give him That's food there. Life. That's so strange. So you're not joining me. Oh, window. So when they were having, uh, yeah. when they were making love, uh -huh. you could just come and observe them. Yeah. <laughs> Going oh, right. Yeah. This is very strange. Yeah. I have a question. Do they think that those traditions okay. are strange? I'm just asking. Yeah. There's no like uh, nothing, no undertone. Uh, like, I don't want to insult yeah. anyone. Yeah. They are not insulted. The rest was like, yeah, it's very weird, but it is weird for us, not for the person. I mean, the people who used to live at the of at course the, the time. Of yeah. course, of, of course, course, that's it's, logical. Yeah, it yeah. is weird. It's just yeah. so weird. Let me guess. Let me guess. <laughs> this was the house of a chair. No, no. I would say it was the house of a goat. Uh, no, no. <laughs> it was the house of the, I mean, worker. Worker. Yeah. I think the worker's house is even smaller than the house of a drum. <laughs> that is true. That is true. <laughs> so let's have a little tour around the worker's house. This is a fireplace. This is a table. And this is a bed. Thanks for watching. Let's move on. So we're approaching the, the tree that the king planted here, Mwezi Gisabo. He was one of the best kings and three more kings came after him, but their reign didn't last long. This is the son of Mwezi Gisaba, Mutagam Bikije. His reign lasted only seven years because his brother stabbed him. The next king apparently had Italian roots because his name was Mwambuza Bangricenge. Bangricenge. His mother was from uh, Napoli. Naples, yes, Bangricenge. The last king was Ntare V Ndizeye Charles. Because of the colonization, they started giving uh, the kings French names. That's why there's Charles. Sherry told us that he was really handsome. Yeah, really. He had like beautiful big eyes, but he lasted only two months. And uh, after his death, democracy started? Yeah. This is some Burundian history lesson. You're welcome. Urakodze. Urakodze. Merci. Au revoir. Au revoir. So bumpy. We're currently in a village. Okay. We asked the local mm -hmm. if there's a restaurant, and they said there's one restaurant in the whole fucking city Ooh. or village. I would say. Watch your mouth, lady. Yes, I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay, so there's only one restaurant, yeah. but there may be no food. Yeah, because of the student who were like... Because there was yeah, like a national yeah. exam and yeah. all the students uh, mm -hmm. were writing it to today and they may have eaten all the food. Mm -hmm. <laughs> These people, they ate all our food. <laughs> <laughs> Look, there's this... Okay, oh. okay. Do you think I can fly the drone? Stop being so spoiled. No, you can't get sick. this village we were supposed to eat here a police officer approached us with a bunch of random guys and they started arguing with us they demanded money they were calling somewhere again trying to look very important yeah. this is so common in Africa we're so glad we're having yeah. you because uh, my French sucks the the number one rule is argue till death <laughs> like I always argue with them they just want money because we are two white people here and it's it's always like this sometimes the police officers are 
way too aggressive and that's when I'm usually bribing them but these didn't seem that aggressive so uh, we were just arguing like Sherry was arguing 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 she she didn't give up and eventually they left let's eat in another village Rutekama, Rutekama yeah. is the name of the village or town we're currently in and we're gonna try to look for a restaurant because I'm close to dying right now. And then we're gonna look for the formal clothes, which will be mission impossible. But that, my dear friends, will be shown in the next episode. Buying formal clothes in a village market to look decent in a glorious dory is really going to be mission impossible and you should get ready for a crazy, crazy episode. See you in a few days.